in my bonds. One contemporary version of this says this, I appeal to you to show kindness to my child, Elizabeth. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Paul's request for grace is a request for grace for someone he claims ownership over. The ironic thing is that Philemon, uh, Onesimus, had been running away from being owned. He wanted his liberty. He wanted his freedom. And now that he is facing death, he stands the chance of living because someone has decided to take ownership over him. He ran from it, but it is a thing now that is going to save him. In this story, Paul has managed to form such a relationship with Onesimus. They have grown to love him. When you and I are far from God, this is what we ought to do. Seek him out, just the way that, that Onesimus sought out Paul in this city. Spend time with him, worship with him, talk with him. Only then, when he knows that he has your heart, is he able and willing to say to his father, this is my child. I'm okay with them and appeal for your life. Jesus is the only one who is going to be able to do this for you. He says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. This is the type of relationship, my friends, that we want with Jesus Christ. One where he's able to stand for us and vouch for us. Let's continue. Let's take a look at verse 11. Verse 11 is interesting. Paul is being a little tricky here. Verse 11 says this, Which in time past was to be unprofitable, but now profitable to me and to thee. Here's the deal. The name Onesimus means profitable. It means of great value. And clearly, Onesimus has proven himself not to live up to his name. His irresponsibility of theft proves that. His unreliability in running away proves that even further. He has not lived up to his name, much like you and I so often, who claim Christianity, claiming Christianity, but denying the power thereof, not living up to the true value system that makes you a real Christian. But the good news is this, Paul is not here suggesting that Onesimus is the same man. Paul is declaring that he's a new man. He says, you know what, I've spent some time with him. He spent some time with me. We've talked, he's learned, he's listened. There's a new spirit inside of him. Old Onesimus is gone, and behold, this man has become new. He dies daily to the sins of the world. It would be great if Christ were to say the same thing about us to his father. You know, I've spent some time with him. You know, I've spent some time with her. She's okay now. That stuff, that's in the past. There's a new spirit inside of them. And father, all things are new. They are covered by my blood. It would be great if he could say that. Let's take a look at verse 12. It says, Whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him as myself. Now, this one's a little stronger. This is, this is a little different. Paul is not talking about the good deeds of Onesimus. He's now saying, listen to me, my friend. The person who I've sent with you has a part of my heart with them. Do you understand the love that is in this statement? The person I've sent with you, I'd rather have them here. It pains me not to have him here. I can see Jesus saying the same thing. Father, it is at my expense that the sinner was able to come to you. How can you refuse him now? If I'm going to be in the deficit, at least you should gain by having this person with you. After all, he's profitable now. He was nothing before, 
But now he's a servant that will stay with you forever. And I've given my all for him. Accept. Accept him now. Accept him now. We'll, on uh, verses 13 and 14, we're going to skip over that, but I'll just tell you a bit about it. It says, Whom I would have retained with me that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the gospel. But without thy mind, I would do nothing. He's simply saying, listen, I'd rather have him here. But I'm not going to do this without your permission. We'll take a look at verse 15. This is probably my most favorite part. This is my favorite text in this whole thing. Because this tells me that even if you feel far from God right now, that there's opportunity, there's hope for you to feel like you're going to be with God forever. Here's what it says. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. Take note of the tact and the sensitivity that Paul writes to his friend here. He doesn't remind him that this guy stole money from you. He doesn't remind him that, that, that this guy ran away. He says, listen, maybe you were separated for a little while. I know he was no good when he was there. I know you feel hurt because of what he's done. All that means is that he wasn't a good servant when you had him in the first place. But here's the good news. He's been able to talk to me. He's been able to change. There's something new about him. And the person I'm sending back is not the same person who left. It means, my friend, that the person you're receiving now will be a slave, a servant who never ever leaves you. And he'll remain with you forever. So receive him there. Because perhaps it was a good thing that he left. My friends, there is nothing like Christ spending time with you and changing your minds and your hearts so that God can see you in a different light, that you can operate differently, that your mind be filled with the Holy Spirit instead of carnal things. Think about how long you've been unfaithful to God. Think about how far you've run from Him. Now think about being prepared softly and tenderly by Jesus. You know where you were two, three years ago. No one could have pictured it. But now, here you are. Why? The tender voice of Jesus. The comforting touch that he has. This is what this slave receives from Paul. And you and I can continue to receive this from Jesus Christ. 16 is powerful also. It says... <coughs> Not now as a servant. Remember, he says to receive him forever. And here's the condition. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. A brother, beloved especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Paul is asking for a whole lot here from Philemon. He's asking for a whole lot from Philemon. Philemon was a thieving slave when he left. And he's suggesting, I want you to accept him as you would be. In Philemon's house, there's a church. Who started the church? <coughs> Paul. Paul is a partner with Philemon in the beginning of that church. And 